world now you are. We're seeing the woke, uh, woke, woke uh, ism and all of that. You know what I mean by all the things going on around us. Like, the things going on, uh, on the, just talk about how much crime. Like, oh, I don't live in Houston and woke. It's just, it can depress you just looking at the news, right? There's so many things going on and it's affecting our lives, it's affecting our family, it's affecting even the church, what we, where we're taught in our belief system of being challenged. When you look at TV and you look at homosexuality and you know, rampant and being kissed in front of the listener. I, when I was growing up, I didn't see nothing like that on TV, right? Right. So these things are just seem like uh, bombards us in life. And you got to deal with your own personal life on top of that. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with uh, your own health issues, you're dealing with your own personal tragedies or your personal challenges from day to day. You got family issues, what other things we, we do, right? Family issues, all type of things, jobs. And, uh, but if you get up in age, you start dealing with your body changes. Uh, going to doctors more, you know, <laughs> trying to make sure you keep your cholesterol down. Try to, Try to get, try to keep, try to stay in this life a little longer, right? Yeah, yeah. And so all that becomes things that are challenging to our thoughts. And so what is the, what do y'all think the, uh, before I get into it, what, let's talk about that. What are your thoughts on that? How do we deal with those type of things? And, and uh, where are you at in your life? You know, this uh, challenge life is presented to you. Anybody want to talk? Let's do interactive class this morning. Talk about that. I can talk about myself. I don't care if you want Anybody want to start? Any challenges that you have, thinking about, kind of like me? Yeah. Reality is here. The reality is here, whether we accept it or not. You know, but as a Christian, we're, Larry was teaching a class on, or any, um, on the mind. And we, we should possess the mind of God, have the mind of God. You know, focus in on what He wants us to do. You know, in life, spiritually, because that's the only way we're going to survive, and we have to stand for something, and that something is stand for a pure life, stand for God, stand for a pure life, and let the world know that we're standing for it. We're going to come up against opposition. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to come up against opposition, but we have to make sure that we make this stand. You know, I was just thinking about a scripture, and the Lord brought it to my heart this morning that the Lord said, "For the Lord is not slack concerning His promise." As men count slackness, but as long suffering to us, what? Not willing that any should perish, but that all men come to repentance. He's willing to wait. And if he's willing to wait, when we present the word, we should be willing to wait. So the word is the one that's going to penetrate someone's heart and make them uh, follow him and accept him. And that, that's what's going to happen. But life is very challenging. You know, as uh, Lord almost blessed me, in about two more years, I'll be 70 years old. And I was like, man, I'm surprised. It was a struggle all the way, you know. And it's like, uh, it's, it's not getting any easier, but I know spiritually that the Lord is on my side. He's fighting my battles. you got three score plus 10. No, he's fighting, he's fighting my battles, and that's the good thing, and, and we have to focus on that. Yeah, good, 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 good point, good point. You know what I was baptized in 1972, and when my challenge is so much entertainment within the church, uh, you go and there are programs this and programs that and the worship service, you just don't see people that are dedicated to the Lord and His work like you used to. I've seen a big change, and I met with challenges that are great, even among the leaders. Because they're accepting music within the church and they're letting, uh, gonna vote for homosexuality rights. You know, they're following so many worldly things until it seems like the church has lost its flavor as far as spiritual and loving one another to me. So you got a, a more you know, individual challenge, kind of like where is it? But here is where we are. It's reality. It's the individual life, right? And now you bring there's another form of reference here that we're talking about now, the spiritual challenge. Yes. And that's that weighs on us heavily too, especially if we grew up in the church 
and you see these change agents coming yes. around. You see things that we never saw. We never thought we would see this in the church of Christ, right? I, and you know, as a traveling man, I'm all over the place now, and I, I see things I never thought I'd see. Because post-pandemic has even put some more uh, challenges among us that we were not faced before the pandemic, such as online worship and the departure from, uh, from the assembly of the saints. We're, that's the challenge of every congregation now. So the online service was the benefit when we were all captured at home and locked down. Uh, it, it looked at the upside of that. You know, for example, for me, I started a national program that brought 5,000 plus listeners on just because of the, the fact that we had nowhere to go. And so many people tied into it. And God's for me, it went viral all over it. I never thought about that. But that was, that was the upside of it, right? Then you have the downside where now, post pandemic, that's people want the convenience store, which is the online service and conference calls. And, they doing all these different things. And then you go into assemblies. What you're seeing is changes to bring people in uh, as as the denominational work, if you will. They're 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 they're, they're, they're uh, utilizing all of the other means other than the gospel. So the departure from the preaching of the truth. And like Brother Freedom said, like the word is what makes the difference in life. Mm -hmm. To me, that's an individual thing because if you if you really truly love God like you say you do, you're gonna do what is right. You're not gonna attend that online service if you can make it to service. It's all about condition of that person's heart on really what they want to do for God and to serve Him. Right. Individual challenge, spiritual challenge, and personal level of commitment to the Lord to bring about these changes. We're going to get a bit lighter in a minute, sister. Well, mm -hmm. now what is your name? Phyllis. Sister Phyllis. All right. Phyllis Smith. Yes, ma'am. Well, what I want to add is, you know, the world made such a big transition when we got cell phones. And now, uh, we're fixing to have another major big change.
But the problem with that is there's also the other side of that. The other side of it is people take the technology and they use it to do something that is not good. So by reaching everybody during the pandemic, the good thing, wonderful thing, but others, Satan has the same kind of technology that we do. And it's kind of hard to separate, you know, where do we, where do we use, how do we use the technology to benefit God, not benefit us? There's a lot of challenges, and the challenge of how do you, how do you take advantage of uh, these technologies with God? For example, I mean, with the national program, you know, we say a lot. God went out through the phone line. You know, we, we think about that. We think about that. You know, the advance in our lives, the buggies, the cars, the, they don't try to go all electric and all that. Things are changing. It's, it's all out of our control. Mm -hmm. Amen. These are things that are out of our control. So Amen. Help us control so now, if it is going to come as a gospel, it is Bible, I think we're at, and give us some thought about it. And we can use technology. We don't need to let technology use us. And a lot of instances, that's what we do. We use it, and then we allow it to use us. It can be used for good. Online, that's very good. During the pandemic, it was perfect. I mean, per totally perfect. God has a way of engineering this and making it for our good, and we need to realize that he is making it for our good. It's for us. It's to help us. It can be used, someone brought up Satan. He can utilize, we can utilize it for the wrong purpose too, but we need to realize that what is our focus? Matthew 6 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. If you want to focus on him and do what he wants us to do, we can do that. We can accomplish the purpose. Absolutely. It's all up to us. It takes us back to the point that we need to think about it. God is bigger than anything, right? Mm -hmm. So the providence here. Uh, this this pandemic did not happen without God's hand. Amen. It was allowed. Right? Mm -hmm. It was allowed for a purpose. Mm -hmm. and he shut down, think about it. Las Vegas was shut down. He shut down Sin City. Mm -hmm. He shut down false doctrine teaching in the church building. He shut down places that were that was done that, that, that did not do anything other than you know, club. Places where drugs were used and all kind of things, all kind of sins ceased to put the building to go in and out due to a plague. This right. The first time plague, when well, God sent people home and they didn't get to go to church, that wasn't the first time that happened. You know that, right? Amen. This is what happened. The Bible plague. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had a plague where you couldn't go around with people, so that was similar to that. But it, what is the, for now we get back to is God in the picture? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. For us, we know that all things work together for good. Mm -hmm. Conceptually, we have to understand there's nothing happening in this world that's to our bad. We say that all things work together for what? Good. Good. Love God. Love God. Right. Amen. And call call now I say all things work together for good. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems bad to us, you know, when things happen, but after, you know, we'll get through that. You know, so is that what he's talking about? It works for the good, even though this bad thing that happened in our families, like, you know, families and stuff, right. but for the good, all things work together. Exactly. That's what I want. That's what I want. Any other comments? I'm going to go pick them. All right, here's what I want us to do. I want you all a couple thoughts. All right. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter. Blessed be God, even the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy of God, what? 
comfort. All of the comfort. And who comforted us in all tribulations, that include everything we just talked about. Right? Mm -hmm. All the comfort comes from God in all tribulations that we may be able to do it. Comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort where we, we ourselves are comforted of God. The purpose for the tribulation, for the trial, the everything we talk about, that God come, he comforts us through those situations for a purpose. That we may be able to what? Now what we call that is experience. Think about it. Everything we talked about is related to our experience in life. Right? I'm going to come back here. Let's go to Romans chapter 5. And watch what I got to hit this Sunday morning. Now, okay, we'll go a little different angle this, this today. In Romans chapter 5. We're going to come back. Hold your finger there. We're going to come back there, but I'm going to show you what's going on. It's the reality that's happening. In Romans chapter 5. Watch this. It says uh, in verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with who? God. So we have peace with God no matter what's going on in our life if we have that relationship. Back to what Brother Dwayne said. Uh, through who? Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why we became Christians. That's how we became Christians. And then he says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. It's a lot here, but I'm just going to deal with a couple things. Where we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, this is what, very important to understand. Verse 3. Not only do we have that, that rejoicing because of who we are in our relationship with God, but he says what? But we glory in what? That word glory kind of mean bragging in our ways. I think. We, we glory in tribulation. Mm -hmm. The pandemic brought some challenges to us. Sicknesses in our bodies, things we see going on in the church that are bothering our mind, things that are happening, those are all tribulations, trials, tests, mm -hmm. faith, right? Mm -hmm. Then he says, You glory in How are you doing that? And he says, Here, uh, he says, uh, verse uh, 3, knowing, you know, knowing that this tribulation working what? Patient. Went back to what he said, God not willing to. That we perish, mm -hmm. that we all come to. Repentance. He's long suffering. Mm -hmm. So if we know God is long suffering, when this tribulation comes, He's de He's developing in us what we need to be more like Him, mm -hmm. and that is patience, mm -hmm. waiting for Him to get us through this situation. Mm -hmm. We got to know, no matter what's presented to us in His life, God is bigger than the issue. He's bigger than AI. Mm -hmm. No matter how you tell the man think he is, God is still. They say they, they call it a they call it God like and tell us no no kind of way can it be God like it's human like <laughs> it's, it's human like and tell us so our perspective is now you can't you can't get there you can't be God like and tell us right but God is in control of that He's in control of everything going on and He's in, in, in the, so as we work through it we're learning something from it what to be patient patience and then look what happens next and with that patience comes an experience. Mm -hmm. Remember over there in 2 Corinthians, he said, I'm going to comfort you in your tribulation that you may be able to comfort others. So if we don't get the trial, if we don't get the tribulation, then we don't work on patience. And without the patience, we can't get the experience. Because you got to wait on God to get us through the situation. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about now, this whole thing working for good, no matter what it is, tragically, but no matter how it challenges us, it is a purpose that God has to have us to wait on Him and to get this experience because somebody's going to need you to talk about it. Mm -hmm. See, think about it. I lost my wife. I always use this method. I had never lost a wife before. It was a first time experience. You know what I learned from that? You don't tell people, you know, I know what you're going through. Because you don't have the same experience. There's no way you can say that to me. It was my experience to share it. Right? So whatever each individual in here has going on in their life, whatever challenges you have, 
you're going to develop an experience that only you can talk about. Right? Mm -hmm. And so each, of, each person in this room got an experience that I can't tell you. But God gave you that experience to use to bring glory to him. Mm -hmm. That's what he wanted. He may comfort us in all our truth that we may be able to comfort others. Got it? What is the purpose of the pandemic? Why did he challenge us? He had to give us an experience. We, we would have never had the experience. Think about it. What's the most tragic thing you ever went through? Well, I thought it was the death of my little brother. I thought that was the worst thing ever happened to, to the lost Sharon. <laughs> and I said, well, it's bigger than that. Right? So now I'm talking about experiences only I can talk about. So all the things we talk about, whether it's technological, whether it's personal, whether it's individual, whether it's a spiritual child, we walk into the church building and pay, play, Place of people are not assembling, they're going online. You know, when there's an experience here, we went online and we got the experience of what that's like. Now we can talk about coming back to the assembly. Some people don't need to hear from us. The personal experience, how a child jokes, right? And then he says, uh, uh, this experience comes something else. Three things we learned patience came from it, come from us, we have to wait on God and be a long suffering. Everybody, we said all the right things as we talked about it. Y'all see that? It came with experience. We had to wait on God. He got us through. And we know he did. So what do we do with it? We change life. This is how we change life. My life changed over experience. And it gives me hope for the next one. I got it. Here comes the hope. Or no matter what the tragedies are, or the trials are, or the challenges are, once I got the experience and I look back at it, that's what I'm going to go next. It's a backwards look by like looking in the rear view. The work, you know, who, who brought me through that? Who got us through that? This is not the first time we had uh, technological changes in life. We went from buggies to cars, from cars to airplanes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We went from Oh, dialing phones, the internet. All that was allowed by who? God. God. Nothing happens that God doesn't allow. Y'all remember? You remember 2 Corinthians chapter 12? Let's go over there right quick. I want to show y'all something else. As I go back, I'll come back, I'm going to close this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. But let's go to chapter 12. And I want you all, you don't remember this one. This, you remember this conversation here with Paul. Paul was talking about himself, what he had going on with him. Remember that? Y'all remember the thorn in the flesh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, verse, let's go to verse 7. You want to read for me? Unless I should be exalted above measures through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Okay, watch this. And some people say, we don't know what the thorn was. But he told them what the thorn was. So you read some commentary, you say, well, we don't know if it was a physical illness or what it was. But in here, Paul says, and very specifically what it was. See what he said? He said that, was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Then he said, the devil, the devil, the devil. The messenger of Satan for a purpose. The yeah. word buffet means like punching the stomach. It's a buffet. They buffet the cheese, they punch it. So the message, the thorn was the messenger of Satan with a purpose. To buffet. See, so life can send us these buffets, these punches and stuff. <clears throat> How we gonna deal with that, right? Become a thorn and flesh, but it's the messenger of Satan to but unless I should be exalted. He said that. He said, anyone want to say what? I said, uh, for this thing. He called it a thing. See that? I will. The of the Lord's thrice. He went to the Lord three times about this thing. This thing was the messenger of Satan. Buffet. When Satan buff is up, he wants us, he wants to take out our way. What's the purpose of the buffet? To 
to take what, what, what we got. It's impossible to doubt to please God. Faith. faith. The whole purpose of the buffet is to take the faith away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we're going through something, you still got to maintain faith. Technological faith, spiritual faith, individual faith. You follow me? Everything requires what? Faith. Faith to believe that God is bigger than the problem. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So we have no reason to be in a state of worry. sins and cursed God in their hearts 
Thus did Job uh, continually. This is a spiritual man, right? Mm -hmm. Next verse. Now, now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves to the Lord, and Satan came among them. Satan joined, joined in with angels, right? <laughs> and what happened? The Lord said what? And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro of the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So all this going on, who's involved in everything we just talked about? Satan. Satan. So we believe in God, we gotta know there's another force acting as all this is happening in our life. And we know the story pretty much, don't we? Mm -hmm. of, Job, of Job, don't we? But I want you to point out something. Go to verse 11. After all that's was said and done, we're talking about upright man, spiritual man, Satan gets involved. Mm -hmm. He tells God, of course, you know, you got this hedge around you, you, you protect him. Mm -hmm. But notice what happens when the thorn starts to come to life. But put, but put forth thine hand now. And touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to the face. Go back to verse 12. Go back to verse 12. Uh, 13. Verse 10? 13. 13. Okay. And there was a day when the sons and his daughters were eating and drinking the wine in the elder's brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen thou plowed and the asses feedest beside them, and the Sabines fell upon them and took them away. Yea, and have slain servants, and the edge of the sword, and only I am escaped among, uh, alone to tell thee. Speak. And he said, yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and has burnt up all the sheep, and the servants are consumed them, and all am I escaped alone to tell thee. Now point out, verse 14. There came a messenger to Job. Mm -hmm. What got Paul? The messenger of Satan. Who's, who God has God loose on Job? Satan. Who's sending these messages? Satan. The messenger number one. Verse, verse uh, 17. Messenger number two. Let's drop down to verse 18. While he would... The second message was still speaking. Mm -hmm. There yeah. came another. Mm -hmm. That's messenger number three. Bad so news. He, all these messengers are messengers of Satan. Bad news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. So Job and, and 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 Paul are parallel. You got a New Testament example of it, and you got an Old Testament example. In both cases, it was the messenger of Satan. When some something comes in and struggles trials and tribulations and trouble or things that we see in the world that is challenging us, that challenges our faith. So the whole purpose of turning him loose on Job was to see what Job believed the Lord. But Job said, naked I can, naked I'm going to return. God gave it and God took it away. Watch what he says. Bless, Bless you. The name of the Lord. You see, so what do we do? This is just a simple lesson. A lot of things that we're faced with are allowed by God by his permissive will. Satan could have never touched Job. He couldn't have touched Paul. God didn't allow us. But you know he can't touch us unless God allows us. But what is the purpose of God allowing us? Back to 2 Corinthians. Remember the purpose is to get the experience. Mm -hmm. And the experience, the purpose of the experience is for we to be able to so work. when you look at the word comforter in the Bible, it, it, in Greek it means uh, it, the word comforter, parakletos or parakletos. And what that means, it's kind of like a parachute. You know what a parachute purpose is? Mm -hmm. Not to stop you from jumping. Yeah. It's, cool. it's allow you to jump and mm -hmm. the land is off. Yeah. See, when the trial comes, brothers and sisters, we got to so when the death comes, we got to deal with the judgment. Mm -hmm. But we ain't got to slap. Mm -hmm. Because we have a parent. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. yes. It's going to ease us through the pandemic. It's going to ease us through that, those changes in the church. And when we get through it, uh, he gave us a confidence feeling. That's that peace of God that we're talking about. As long as we have peace with God, faith is okay. 
But if we trouble God, there's an issue with what? Faith. What God told Paul, now he can he'll do that for you. He can tell you what. Because now you're going to learn when, I'm, when you weak, I'm strong. Now it's dependence on God which gives us hope. Makes sense. Now you go back to Second Corinthians 1. And let me just drop down and show you a couple other things here. And then I'm open it up for comments. Second Corinthians 1. Let's go back over there briefly. Hope you're enjoying these thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, let's drop down from here. Let's drop down this time. Uh, and get away from it. So the comforting piece of it in the view of the deliverance through the situation. What is the view of the deliverance for the Christian who have faith? Notice this. Let's go, uh, verse 8. We'll start at verse 8. Second Corinthians 1, verse 8. For well, we would not, brethren, have ye ignorant of the trouble which come upon us in Asia, that we are aware of pressed out and measured above strength, insomuch that we uh, we despair even in our lives. So what Paul said, hey, Christians, in Corinth, we don't want you to think we went through nothing. It was so bad, we, we, we thought we were going to lose our life. Mm -hmm. Watch what happened there. He says, what? But we had to send us to death in ourselves, and we should not trust in ourselves. It looked like we were doomed. And this AI is going to take over, the church is falling apart, and people are bringing in false doctrine. It looks like we're doomed. It looks like we're doomed. That's the view mm -hmm. that Satan wants us to have, that we're doomed. Because if we think we're doomed, and, the, and this thing going to go real bad, we don't have no control, we've lost the face in the Supreme. Amen. Mm -hmm. Got it? So watch what happened. Paul says this. That's what happened. He said, hey, we, 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 it was bad. We had to sue the devil ourselves. But we should trust raised, ourselves, but in God who raised the dead. Who raised the dead. Watch this one now. Watch this. Who delivered us from so great a death. All right, watch and, this. And let's look at it. Hold on, hold on. Uh, 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 Fred. Now, let, let's look at this deliverance. Okay. Here it is. Let's go this way. The event, whatever event we talked about, start, had a starting point. Got it? Got it. Now, no, no, let's read that one more time, that verse there. First time. Yeah, yeah, the trial, the test. Yeah, who is okay. He said, who? Okay, first time. Start over. I'm going to turn that one verse down real quick for you. Who delivered us from a great death? Delivered. Hmm. Now, here's the situation. There come a time when you through the event, you've been delivered. That's past tense. Y'all got that? I mean, you got an event in your life that you can look back at and say, God got me through that. Mm -hmm. That's past tense. Yep. Watch faith working now. Let's move from now from past tense to what? Paul said, yes. He delivered us. Mm -hmm. That's experience. Mm -hmm. So now I got an experience. I had to go through it to get the deliverance. Y'all got it? Got Here it. comes the experience. What happened next? Okay. And does deliver. Now, does is present tense. T-H does deliver. That's present. Y'all see that? Right. So right now, you have an event that, that started, another event, another trial, another test that's in your life right now, and he's delivering you from it. You in a, you, every, one of, every one of us is in a, in, a, in a situation in our life that God is working us through it. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, God is bringing us through. He got our back, right? He mm -hmm. delivered us. How do we know? Well, look at the past. Look back now. He does. He did. He already did it for you one time. Mm -hmm. Now your faith says, "Hey, I got an experience. I know. I know if He did it then, He'll I got now. Girl, I got hope now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen. I got hope because He already done it. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to say your word about oh, man, how this go in. It's not for us to understand the end, it's for us to understand the present that he's uh, he's in he's making this study happen already, right? Y'all see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now what now keep reading. Okay. Uh, read. And whom we trust now, that he will yet deliver us. Now, so when you got hope, you got now you got trust came from the experience, and then he will yet, he said, yet deliver. Mm -hmm. Future. Mm -hmm. So now my trust extends into the the future, mm -hmm. that what I know, that one came, he's bringing me through this one, but I also know there's another one mm -hmm. on the way. Yep. So now I, if I, now I develop trust that in the future, when the next one comes, whichever event it is, whatever trial it is, it, that God is going to handle it. Mm -hmm. 
And all this adds up to faith. Without faith, it's impossible. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Past, present, and future. No event, no experience. No event, no hope. No event, no trust. Pandemic, everything we listed were events God allowed Satan to buffet us, mm -hmm. to destroy our faith. Amen. And if you get our faith wrong, that's all you have to have. Good lesson. We're, we're on the lesson right now on Tuesday. Uh -huh. Overcoming doubt, disbelief, distrust, which deals with faith. Exactly. And that's where it's at. And, 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 you know, God, the guy, the guy know what to do. He don't have to tackle everything. If I get their faith, I got these Christians. All right, let's talk about it. What y'all learn? What you get from the car? I want you to leave here with something you can have with you think. Or at least a refresher or something. This way. Right. See, God, it's like, who, God, like, you remember Philip and the unit? I mean, mm -hmm. God provided the Philip to the unit, right, at a time he really needed it. Right? Mm -hmm. And then, then, so God will provide for us, the people in our lives, who can bring. 
bring that coffee mm -hmm. without a request. Because that's part of his, uh, part of what God does for his children. I'll never leave you. No. So I will I forsake you. Mm -hmm. If God didn't send us a comfort, he would have forsaken us. Remember, even Jesus told us, hey, I'm going, but I'm going to leave you another comfort. Mm -hmm. God's going to provide for sure. It's like Job had a healing. Now, for us, it's the Holy Spirit. We're seated. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Peter 1 and verse 13. Anybody else? Then we got five minutes. Left. So, God sees where we need help. Perfect example, Cornelius. The Bible says he prayed his own point for the Lord, and the Lord dispatched uh, Peter to come to his aid. To teach him what to do to be saved. Mm -hmm. You know, so the Lord has a way of doing that. He might not directly talk to that guy who was a sinner, but God knows everything and He knows who needs help. Exactly. See, therefore, it's not a prayer request. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a misunderstanding. Point. See, here with God is like the, God is like the, I call it the helicopter over the parade. Mm -hmm. See, God saw this event before it ever happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah? He see the beginning and He see the end. We want to see where we're at right now. He has an ability that we don't have. Right. Mm -hmm. So my faith is in God right. already knows the end result of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for Cornelius, it, he, he, it read his mind. The angel touched said one thing, Cornelius said another. One. But God provided Cornelius, uh, the preacher to go down and tell Cornelius like he provided Philip to go tell the unit. Not that the unit can't pray. God already knew he was in the desert. Why would he send Philip from a million people to one man in the desert? The providence of God. Yeah. Good point. Another thing about that story that I really took, the eunuch was on his way from worship, so evidently he didn't hear about the gospel or becoming a Christianity or anything like that because he was on his way from worship. Now, like you said, God's going to always interject and send what you need. You don't need to really get out there and seek for yourself. That's that faith. Right. That's that faith. I already know God will handle it. I just don't know how he's going to handle it. Right. That's the whole message that's going to happen. Anybody coming out loud and going through something, man, here's one thing I do know. God's going to take care of this thing. What we're going to do is pray about it. Sometimes we're trying to figure it out. How's he going to do it? Don't worry about how he's going to do it. He knows how. Exactly. So that's that's when we say don't worry about he's gonna do it, it means I trust. Yeah. Why do I trust? Because of my experience. Mm -hmm. What is my prayer brain? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, but that's where patience comes in. Sometimes our patience or life all get in our way. But we have we don't go God's time. So we think, well, this should happen like tomorrow. Well, God is tomorrow, maybe a month from now. So I think the patience also works a big, has a lot to do with this. Absolutely. If you go to James chapter 1, well, I just said that. But like, you see, you be careful by that, praying for patience. <laughs> Sometimes the trial comes because you need to learn patience. And patience, James has to have her perfect work, perfecting you to a mature state. Right? That's what it's doing. It's maturing, it's growing in your faith. So if we have a lack of patience, faith. more trials. Scary. Mm -hmm. It's a thought. You know? God can send us whatever we need to get us where we want to be. And the end result of God is your soul. Not about life. Not about having pleasures in this life. Though. It's not that we don't have no pain. And we're going to have that. It's got to, just like Jesus had to hit the wolf, he had to go to the cross. That's it. If any man is suffering, let him suffer out. That's the point. All right, we're out of time. Good, good, good class, right?